Hello everyone, my name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. Welcome to the Chemistry Channel, new subscribers. Thank you subscribers for following and liking our videos. If you're just uh, new to our channel, hit the subscribe button. We love new subscribers. Thank you. You can also follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Today I am going to talk about Obea. All right, I'm going to talk about Obea. I had someone named Nathan that wanted to talk about Obea a little more. I, you know, we did talk about Obea. I had an Obea discussion. We talked about it a little bit. I covered some, and it was really packed with information, that video. Basic information, it really kind of gave you an idea uh, uh, of Obea, you know, and kind of the history of Obea. I did kind of more of a history of Obea. But today, I'm going to really talk about what Obea really is, all right, and the origins, more of the deeper origins of it. For those of you, and I, I want to emphasize this here right now, for those of you that's thinking about going into Obea and you think, oh, it is a religion, it is this, it is that, you know, let me be very clear, Obea is an energy, it is a primal energy that is directly connected to primal man, to primal culture. These are the secret codes of the universe that's given to specific individuals or individuals that possess that energy. And there's also a possibility that we already have the energy inside of us is just dormant in some of us. All right, so let's get this, you know, understand that. And before you go into Obea, I know a lot of us want to, and I, you heard me say this, a lot of us want to jump off into Ifa, thinking, way, hey, we're going to have, be able to do all this magic, we're going to be able to do all this supernatural stuff and all this stuff, we're going to be jump right in there and do that. Some of us want to go into Vudun. We think we're going to, you know, have access to all this power. We'll be able to manipulate things. You know, we want to go into these different things. Uh, we want to also go into witchcraft. We want to go into these different things that will empower us. And that's good, you know. But you, we also have to understand the fact, too, if we have not did the inner work, if you're not going to do the inner work, your your craft, you're not going to... You're not going to evolve. You're not going to grow in that spiritual practice. Even in Ifa, you have to do character work. You have to do ancestral work. And that's including a, 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 a cleaning out those karmic loops. Getting rid of those uh, genetic generational energy patterns that's negative. Dealing with your psychology. You're going to have to do all, you know, do that character work, dealing with your impulses, your behaviors, things that don't no longer serve you, that you are acting out in your life, that's disrupting your life, that's disrupting your relationships. In any of these spiritual practices, you're going to have to do the work because you're responsible for that. When we let doing the spiritual work, we don't excel and these darker energies take over us. You know, the thing is balance, not to be one, you know, over too much of anything. Okay, it's to be balanced, to be balanced and disciplined. All right. So if you decide to go into this, think about that. You can't, there's no way to avoid the inner work. Basically, is what I'm telling you. That's why you've been seeing me come here and talk about inner work. That's why you've been hearing me talk about the Know Thyself class. Because the inner work is the foundation to working your craft. Some of you say, hey, my, my, my spell's not working. My ritual's not working. This is not working. Uh, I did a spiritual bath. I've done this. I've done that. But it still ain't working. Well, that means you have some inner blockages. There means there's something stuck in your emotional body, your mental body, that you need to work out. There's some old patterns and behaviors that you need to work, work, work out. And when you start to work those out, you'll see your blockages begin to move and your work will become a lot better. 
obey is not going to do it. You can't just skip the inner work and then just go to obey. Because in order to do obey, you have to do the inner work. I just want to make that plain to you. I, you know, I thought that was important to mention. But I'm going to jump into Obea. Uh, I thought this, you know, I'm glad Nathan kind of brought this up. Because I found out some more information, really juicy information. And I'm glad I did uh, look into this. So I'm learning, too, with you guys. You know, I'm always learning. So, Obea, on the other hand, is not a religion in the classical sense. That is not to say there are no meeting. There is to say there are no meeting places such as churches, mosques, synagogues, or other religious buildings or shrines or any other, other underlying infrastructure replicated such a system. Nor is there any sort of congregation, parishioners, Although there are what we may call followers, I be it scattered. Obel is instead a focused application of occult power, tapping the ver virulent source of God's own access, employed without sanction to facilitate or induce spells, call up of answers, predict the future, or garnet, garnier assist or knowledge from planes other than the conventional implemented implemented through the individual skill, cunning, artistry of Obia practitioner, usually beyond the guidelines of traditional witchcraft, sorcery, shamanism, voodoo, or tribal magic. So they're letting you know right there, Obia is beyond the scope of that. It's beyond the scope of, of that. And when they, to study Obia, and I left a link in the other uh, video when I talk about that in the Obea discussion. But to learn about Obea, esoteric, you know, the esoteric culture, they have to, or the occult practitioners, they have to read occult literature from all sorts of cultures to really understand Obea, and even then, it doesn't touch the surface. All right, you can read all those occult books, but it doesn't even touch the surface because that knowledge was destroyed with the, most, with the more ancient matriarch culture. And you're gonna find out why I say that in a minute. But that's what Obea is. It's connected with the most primal first humans. It is also a sound in the language as well. It is not, you know, I know you're trying to say Obea, you, you're thinking Obea is a spiritual system, you know, but it's more like, uh, what am I trying to say? It's like unknown knowledge, knowledge that others don't know. It's not a spiritual system. It's knowledge that others don't know. It's like combinations to the universe to unlock certain things. That's what, what Obea is. So if you're thinking it's a spiritual system, no, it's knowledge that other people don't know because you can use Obea to amp up uh, any spiritual practice. You can use Obea in... Um, and Ifa, you can use Obia in Christianity, you can use Obia in witchcraft, you can use Obia in sorcery. See, it's a knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not a spiritual practice per se. All right? It's just codes that's used to amp up your spiritual practices. All right? So let's I'm you gonna see why I say that in a minute. And then too. Uh, people think they choose Obea. Obea chooses you because some people are just born with the gift to access the knowledge as well. I'll go into that in a minute. It will make sense. Okay. Now, while it is true, the origin of the word is indeed obscured and clouded in secrecy. It is primarily because Obea, as implied above, 
is itself a cloud in secrecy, being the remnant of the one very powerful celebrated secret religious order. Lost in the midst of time, even so slowly over the years, clues have surfaced that indicate that particular secret religious religious orders emanated from a certain general geographical area. Those clues, few in number, that they may be strongly point to the, to the fact that order originated in or around the areas of Egyptian language was either born, dominant, or used by priests or religious class, much as Latin is used by certain religious orders today. With the power and knowledge of Obia maintain a rising from the underground ashes of a dispersed order over the centuries, considering such a background, it is very probable the etymology of the words framed from the Egyptian word ab, ab, meaning serpent, of is winged serpent or dragon, ab meaning wisdom, understanding, and together means serpent of wisdom a or serpent of knowledge. To this day, Obion is the Egyptian name of, for a serpent. Let's stop there. Now, this is why I say this belongs to a matriarch culture because the older matriarch culture uh, had a serpent deity. And the serpent deity is connected with the prime mortal energy in the universe. All right? That's why I say it comes from a matriarch culture. I read that in the book Sybil. They talk about those most indigenous cultures. You'll also see that indigenous cultures in the Bible when Moses had them to look into this serpent eye to heal themselves. You're, you're, they're talking about that matriarch culture. But see, it's, a, it's just a little clip in there. You miss it. But if, they, if this God is all-powerful, why are they looking to the eyes of this serpent and being healed? All right? So think about that for a minute. Throughout the ancient world, the Middle East and Egypt, because of the brilliantly clear desert night skies, the stars and constellation carry deep significance. The great civilization city-states such as Babylonia, Samaria, and Egypt, Africa's the serpent berry is one of the those desert sky constellations. Most people pretty much know what the zodiac is, the constellation on the plane of the epileptic through the through which the sun passes through the course of a year and that that and what their sun sign is in relation to the zodiac such as Sagittarius, Taurus and so on. What most people don't know is that there are actually 13 sun signs, not 12. Now I talked about this in my book Christ Consciousness with every, you know, every which each era this sun goes through the creating these zodiacs because that's why the ancients uh, created the zodiacs to, to track the evolution of human consciousness. So if this zodiac sign is the 13th zodiac sign, this mean, and it's the most ancient form of the occult, all this works together. All right, all this works together because the, you know, uh, the occult and all that, they work with the stars, they work with the energies of the moon, the phases of the moon, they work with the constellations to empower and predict things, all right? So I hope you're following me. This can get complicated if, if, you, if you have not did the research or if you haven't been just really studying, um, studying, I can lose you with this. But with each astrological sign or age, uh, they were tracking the evolution of human consciousness because something, humans develop something different and, and every, I think they said that age, I think it's every 2,000 years or less, human consciousness leaps forward. It leaps forward. These, these constellations, they bring in different energy, light codes, upgrades, whatever you want to call it, that leaps uh, human consciousness forward. I hope that made sense to you. All right. And so that's why I said offices is the first, uh, had to be the first constellation connected with the prime mortal, uh, the prime mortal, uh, prime mortal beings. You can say that as well. Let's say the prime mortal beings, the prime mortal man, prime mortal energy. And so they have a, they had a certain knowledge of the universe. It wasn't nothing, uh, nothing like a spiritual uh, practice. They had certain knowledge of the universe that actually worked codes uh 
combinations on how to do certain things. I hope I hope I'm making sense to you guys. Uh, the Greeks chose to remove one of the original 13 constellations from the zodiac in order to accomplish their desires to have each sign rule for an, an even 30 degrees of sky. So they selected Ophicus to be eliminated. It can only be because of the oranges in Egypt as one of their most powerful deities on par with Osiris, Thoth, all whom answered to only Ra. Obea is the is also a secret, hidden, unknown. The 13th constellation of the zodiac. Ophicus, the ser serpent bearer, is secret, hidden, and unknown. So they're letting you know that this is related. The, the, the constellation Ophicus and Obea is related. Because in that, in that age, in that age is when Obea was being used. In the human consciousness. Do that make sense to you? So they're letting you know. They're letting you know right off. That's what they're saying to you. They're letting you know that in that constellation, Obea was the knowledge Obea was being used within that constellation or that that age. Do that, that make, I hope this is making sense to you. If you read my book, Christ Consciousness, this will make sense to you. All right. Uh, you know, like uh like we had a uh, what was that? The Lion Gates portal that opened up and it was like 888. So you, you have these different portals that open up that will leap human consciousness forward. So and, and, and that's how we evolve. That's how that's how the ancients said, hey, this our human humans, we are evolving according to these constellations. And they track that. That's where you get the indigo children, the crystal children. They can predict that by looking at the constellation or how the human consciousness will evolve, you know, during certain eras. All right. I hope that made sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ophicus is hidden in secrecy and unknown about one person. I thought this is important. About one person in 20 is an Ophicus and they don't even know it. So by saying this, and talking about Obea, they're letting you know Obea lives in some of the people. About one in five people have this Ophicus or primordial energy within them. All right. Uh, if you're interested in knowing when that zodiac, the dates of that zodiac, Ophicus is November 29th to December 17th. And I was shocked by that because my birthday is December 7th. So if we were to keep the 13th zodiac, I would be known as an Ophicus and not a Sagittarius. So that is something. I thought that was really something. Um, in today's world, the most common manifestation of Obia is bended with the Orisha worship. And I'm not surprised by that because when I started doing my uh, doing my research into the occult and witchcraft and all that, it lets you know when you become a witch or a spiritual practitioner, at some point you will have to connect with the Orishas. That's just like a common thing. You, are, you, you know, every practitioner comes in contact with the Orisha because they're the angelic nature forces. They are the primordial beings. You see what I'm saying? They are the primordial beings. You see how the connection with Obea and that because... Our Rishas are known as the primordial beings. I talk about that too when I went on a shamanic journey that, there. And I talked about it looking like jello. This substance is jello is substance. You know, go back and, 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 and uh, watch that video if you're interested in it. But uh, Orishas are spirits of nature as well as powerful ancestors that are prayed to. Asked to intercede in certain cases, actually take possessions of practitioners. Among the top ranking Orishas and one of the seven African powers using the word Ab and, and, and serpent related as well is Abatala. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You guys know I'm not the great at pronouncing things. His color is white, literally chief of white, chief of white cloth. The integration of all colors into one corresponds with Dembala, the prime mortal serpent. I've been telling you that the prime mortal serpent, sky serpent, he is the Orisha piece of harmony and the purity and, uh, and owns the world. When he possesses his children, 
they come about on the floor in the matter of snakes. So, uh, and I talked about my experience with the Orishas when I start working with my ancestors because they start pushing me to do this ritual and and do a prayer to the Orishas to help elevate them. And it was raining outside. You, If you're interested in hearing that story, go back and uh, watch that video when I talk about the Orishas and talk about that ritual I did on the water. I mean, it was a supernatural experience. I knew that the Orishas was there and I knew that um, my ancestors was leading me because they said it would stop raining. When I got out there, it stopped raining. The sun came out. It was just, you know, uh, it was just supernatural. It was supernatural. So I knew that there, you'll know, you'll know when you're having, when the spirit is talking, there's no way to, to dis discount it. You'll know when the spirit is leading you, if you trust the signs, if you trust the signs. But I knew the Orisha and the ancestors were leading me there, and the Orishas was there hearing that prayer, okay? The peoples of the ancient times had legends that a kind of light described as living fire flowed through all living things. Like I said, it's primordial energy. It is, it's the energy. Um, guarding this flame was the serpent Ophesus. Very similar respects to the nearly same namesake is Ophicus. So they're letting you know, uh, and some people can call it the chakras. You know, some people call it, dare say it's the chakras. It's, it's, it's connected with the serpent. But he's letting you know in here there's, there's a kind of barrier uh, that stops us from being able to use it until it's time to activate it. I firmly believe there's a word, it's a, it's a light, it's a sound too, that we have to be exposed to, a primordial sound, uh, the first language of man that we have to be exposed to, to activate this, um, this, 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 this um, obey energy, so to speak. Uh, let me go on. He was said to lay coal in the waters of life. If someone obstructed or hindered the light of the flame, officers would rise out of the water like a monster and consume them. The Greek philosopher Pharisees wrote a great deal about Ophinus, having obtained the doctrine from the Phoenicians, also known as the Ophites. So they talk about these, these symbols, uh, called Orphites in, in the book called The Sibyls. So that's why I said this was an older matriarch culture that had this knowledge of this spiritual, they had this spiritual knowledge. It wasn't so much of a spiritual system. They probably used that to, to enhance their spiritual practices, but this was knowledge that was passed on, okay? The Ophites venerated a serpent by the deity title Ab, sometimes rendered as Ab and Ab or Ar, meaning father, as in the protector of all. They also had the watery serpent Leviathan, a Theophat, which is the same as Ophinus. All of this ties into Abaddon that appears in Revelations as the angel of the abyss. It is unclear if the forces of the abyss are fully good or evil in any way. The obic force, forces that guard the light and keep it flowing apparently take it by whatever means necessary and return it back to where it belongs when a person fails to let it flow or obstructs it. So that's why I say uh, if you don't, if you're not balanced, if you're not working on yourself, you know, it's not a good idea to work with this sort of energy. So make sure you're doing the inner work. For any work, you know, if you want your work to be better, do the inner work. And like I said, Obea is a primordial energy. Um, it is a knowledge also that's passed on. And I believe from my perspective, that deals with the primordial sound of man. That deals with the first knowledge of the universe that's passed on. It's not so much as a spiritual system but the knowledge on letting you know how spiritual systems work, you know, giving you access to all of that because there's no particular deity worshiped in uh, Obea as well. So that is what Obea is. So, and is there um, 
obey a priest. There's not many. If you meet a obey a priest, be you know, make sure that they're authentic, that they're real, because there's not many real, authentic obey a priest. All right, and the ones that were really authentic, a lot of them died out a long time ago. You know, because it's been outlawed for so long, and then they killed a lot of people that that knew about Obea, especially the Aboriginal indigenous culture. You've seen a lot of them, a lot of them, they were primordial, they were connected with the primordial first man. So when you're looking at Aboriginals and you're looking at those older uh, civilizations, cause they're, they're going to be dark. Those individuals, they, they, they had a form of Obea before Vudun and all of them are probably little clip little, little snippets of obeah but they're not obeah all right they're little snippets of obeah but they're not obeah all right obeah is 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 like the 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 keys to all of them now you can use like i said you can use obeah to magnify uh your christian spirit you know christianity you can use it to magnify uh, Ifa or the you know your practice in the Orisha or witchcraft you can use Obea because it's not a spiritual practice it's knowledge you know it's information you know so I hope that makes sense to you I thank you so much for being here with me today I hope this video helped you Nathan I hope it helped you I hope it inspired you and gave you something to think about but I do uh, recommend that you do your research on Obea. And like I said, there's not one particular book of, of Obea. You'll have to read every occult book in each culture to really kind of wrap your mind about around about what Obea is. But really, that those books really don't scratch the surface because, like I say, it's it's really ancient knowledge that's being passed down. And it's also the primordial energy that's, that's within us that can be awakened by Obea. So, I hope this video helped you. Thank you for being here today, loves. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.